there, welcome to our chapter seven overview video. So um, just as a quick wrap, just as a quick jump in, chapters five through seven all covered the um, large AP topic, anticipating patterns where you explore random phenomena using probability and simulations. This is a giant chunk of the AP statistics exam. In fact, it's about 20 to 30% of the questions that you will see. I guarantee you there will be an FRQ question about something covered in chapters five through seven. That's definitely a guarantee. So also not just going backwards, recognizing why chapters five through seven are so important and how they connect to each other. Chapter seven was gonna be the building blocks and foundations for recognizing the two other most important topics on the AP statistics exam or the most calculated questions on the AP statistics exam, which would be confidence intervals and significance tests, which we'll see in chapter eight and we'll see in chapter nine. So some big ideas we should have picked up on from chapter seven in general. We should have known P means population, means parameter, S means sample, means statistics. We should also know, uh, we should be able to ask ourselves this question, how do sample results vary in relation to the population truth? And why is truth in quotations? Because we can negate that claim. If our sampling distribution says, whoa, 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 about our population truth, that would be, you know, we would st stop and say, hey, maybe the original uh, proportion value or population parameter was wrong to begin with. So we also know the distinction between these three uh, phrases, population distribution, sample distribution, and sampling distribution. So remember population distribution, information about the original pop. Sample distribution, information about a single sample I pulled from the population. Sampling distribution, I pulled lots of samples and I put all that information in a single distribution spread. What makes a good estimator? We're talking about that unbiased versus biased. Hey, an unbiased estimator would mean that it's going to match that sampling mean, right? It's going to match that, uh, sorry, pop mean. Proportions, typo there, it says proportions, but proportions means we're dealing with categorical data. Means means we're dealing with quantitative data or vice versa. Quantitative data means you're looking at means. Categorical data means you're looking at proportions. And finally, are you checking conditions before you're doing your calculations? I've got two conditions. First is the 10% condition. My sample size can be no bigger than one-tenth of the original population size. And then the uh, my other condition is the large value, uh, large condition. So, um, oh my God, I lost my train of thought. My N P value or my N times one minus P value, but um, my sample size times my proportion value should be bigger than 10, at least uh, 10 or larger. And the sample size times the opposite proportion, one minus P has to also be bigger than or equal to 10. So chapter seven, one, these are all the facts you should have picked up about uh, chapter 7.1. So facts about the introduction to sampling distribution, population parameter, sample statistics. Can you distinguish proportions from means? Notation, notation, notation. If you can't distinguish between P, P hat, mu, X bar, you're going to you're going to struggle and I'll note that from the AP statistics exam they will check notation. So if you're going to use notation, use it correctly because if you use incorrect, you will absolutely lose points on an FRQ. They cannot give you points because they knew, they inferred what you meant. When you're describing this, you can cuss it out because it is category, I'm sorry, it's quantitative one variable data, so you are allowed to use your center, your spread, and your shape. But for center, make sure you're checking is it an unbiased estimator? You could ask yourself, why do we divide by n minus one when we calculate a sample's variance? And it's because you want to create an unbiased estimate of the population variance. Is my uh, dealing with spread? Low variability is better. Low or no bias is better. And finally, those three distinctions, pop distribution, sample distribution, sampling distribution. Facts about chapter 7.2. Slide number one gives us our uh, kind of like calculated calculation facts. Um, the biggest thing you should recognize from here is sample proportions can vary from sample to sample, but in the long run, you have this beautiful pattern. And because you have that pattern, the mu value of your p hat, your mean of your p hat will be equal to that p value. And the standard deviation of your p hat can be represented by this formula as long as you meet your 10 percent condition rule same with your shape it will be approximately normal as long as your sample sizes are getting larger as long as you meet the large counts condition and that's that np greater than or equal to 10 n times the opposite of p greater than or equal to 10. we learned something else about normal approximation in chapter 7.2 um, if your 
sample sample proportion is large enough, your, your samples are large enough that you have a normal approximation, then you're going to use the three-step method consistently. And we've been doing this for a while, but I do want to harp on it. This is, an, this is a tried and true method. These three steps are things you should be doing on an FRQ anytime you're dealing with that normal approximation. So you state your distribution and values of interest. This could also be drawing the normal approximation with everything labeled that should be labeled. Perform calculations and show every step. And then, of course, answer the question. When you're thinking about uh, Chapter 7.2, ask yourself this question. Would you be surprised if we got a sample proportion like whatever your value was, given that the original pop population proportion is blah, 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 blah. So that's a good question to ask back of yourself every time you're thinking about Chapter 7.2. And finally, Chapter 7.3. Our first uh, little slide deals with all the math kind of stuff, quantitative data, we're dealing with means. That means the, the, the mean of my X bar will be the mean of my population. Remember that X bar is an unbiased estimator. So here's the formula for standard deviation, as long as your 10% condition is satisfied. And if your population distribution is normal, so should your sampling distribution. But what about non-normal? And that's where we have that central limit theorem. So. For non-normal populations, as the sampling distribution of X bar, when your sample size increases, so does the normality. So your normal will, uh, you will approach a normal approximation. No matter how weird the distribution, and that's just a recall to that um, like funky population distribution, as my sample size increased, it became beautifully normal. And that's all I've got for you guys, and I'll see you in class.